it's a it's a skill to be able to be uh, be on a microphone and just talk and not have instant feedback. If you're one on one with someone, that's one thing. But if you're uh, if you, there's some guys that have podcasts and they just it's just them and they're only talk like they won't even talk to the dude that's running the the board. They're just having a conversation, and I'm like, how do you do that? You could do that very easily. Ugh. You could definitely. You should try it. You should try it. I think it'll. I think. I think it would be. Could be, with the amount of voices that go on in your head and nice <laughs> like just you could have you could do a podcast with all your characters and just i mean it all right here we are this is it it's over until december 31st january 1st that shit don't count not for me, because I can't, I can't do regular shit, I can't drink, I don't, I can't smoke, so, New Year's is not gonna be a big deal, it's gonna be real fucking dull and boring for me, personally, cause I can't enjoy it, but it's another story for another day, bit of a bummer holiday in and of itself, but, whatever. It's 9.04 p.m. on Christmas Day, December 25th, 2019. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? The holiday is over. Now, I understand the holiday carries on until midnight. However... My obligations have been fulfilled. I have reluctantly shown face on multiple occasions in multiple households across a few towns, cities, whatever you would call them, in the state. And it's done. I've made my rounds and I will not see everybody again until... Either next Christmas or unless somebody dies and or gets married until then. And that also depends on who it is that gets married because that doesn't necessarily automatically equal out to an invite. Not that I'm hurting to go to a wedding because I am not. I don't dance. So believe I'm in you're in no danger of having me make myself look like a bigger jerk off other than walking in the joint. And I'm classy. I wear a suit. I'm not a fucking slob. I wear a suit to a goddamn wedding and funeral. We'll fuck around. So, 20 pounds later, probably, here we are. And we are here to deal... We are here to deal with the flesh wound. What the fuck is she doing? I think the holiday aftermath, whatever the fuck I'm going to call this because I don't know. So I wrote down a couple of things as they happened. Some of them apply to after the holiday. So let me just go down the list quickly. I hate musicals. What? Yes, you heard me. I hate them. However, I don't know why, but I just watched Nightmare Before Christmas two days ago. And I still enjoy that movie. Don't get me wrong, I think a couple of songs are unnecessary. Maybe it's because it's Halloween, heavy Halloween. I don't know. I'm not sure. I do really enjoy that movie, though, dude. There's shit in there that still makes me laugh pretty hard. It's crazy. So, we have The Nightmare Before Christmas review. Why don't I hate it? I have to figure out what the fuck is that all about. 
gun culture. Oh shit! Everybody on the uh, in the gun lobby right now is losing their mind. Oh, we got a loose listed loose wristed liberal on our hand. Oh no, he's gonna come take away all our guns. Shut up. No, I'm not. I want your fucking guns, douche. And can you not? You know what, dude? A lot of you fucks like to rip on gay people for gay being their identity but I see a lot of you fucking fruity asses making these guns your identity so why don't you shut the fuck up okay you're only as good as the last box of ammo that you bought or at least that's how you feel about yourself a slug is a slug dude no it isn't you're I don't know maybe it's not I have no idea all I know is they come in different calibers, I think they're called. I don't know shit about guns. But we're going to talk about gun culture. Specifically, Nerf guns, Call of Duty, GTA, and the most important, which is actually what landed gun culture on this list, was gun assembly applications. Aim towards children. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So if you're not a sensible gun owner and this subject matter bothers you to have an actual conversation about some things, you might want to exit now. Go ahead and get up out of your chair, throw your fucking soda at the screen, leave the popcorn on the floor, the poor bastard is gonna come in after you will just have to sweep it up and you know go ice your pussy and moan to somebody who gives a fuck dude i would give you a quarter and tell you to call somebody who cares but half of you won't get that and the other half of you probably haven't seen a payphone in 15 years or whatever it is continuing down the list tradition and it carrying on how I realized that I believe I could be wrong time will tell we will see but I believe that we have now been sucked into the vortex and that shit hit me yesterday but we'll get to that sympathy invite which leads ultimately into my next the next topic on the list the Irish goodbye. Important. And then odd gifts. Obviously. So I don't know where do I fucking want to start. I guess we'll get the guns out of the way. So... I know forever guns have been a thing. Oh, shit. Hey. She's a party because she wears two MPs. Oh, you were party? Good she girl. She really likes fucking TV shit. Good girl. Proud of you. Oh, don't break my headphones. Please, that'd be great. Did you give her a uh, treat? Yeah. All right. Hold on. So, guns are a major part of this deal. Oh, I will not come in. You will be careful. 
Maybe. We say hi to everybody. Alright, bye. Nerf guns. Super soakers were big even when I was young. And we gotta, we're gonna, we're gonna take this apart piece by piece. But we'll start with my beef first, which is gun assembly apps, right? I'm over at her sister's house and I'm sitting with her son on the couch. Fucking the Giants were playing somebody. I can't even remember who the fuck it was. The Red, the Giants were playing the Redskins. And in a moment, in between uh, a break, a pause in the game, which is every five fucking minutes. God damn it. NFL is getting written down because I talked about this before and scrapped it. Deleted it. It's going back on. Because you know what? If they're going to continue to go down that fucking road, I'm not going I don't want to represent them in any way, shape, or form. But I look down, and I look over, because everybody's got their phone in their fucking face now. And this dude, this kid, is playing... I'm, I guess you could call it playing. I don't know what you would consider it, but he's moving around on the screen. There's a handgun. And the objective of this game is to you touch a piece of the gun and it breaks off everything down to the spring inside okay so this is in depth shit I would think I don't know the point is that this kid is moving pieces of the gun around on a screen and he's placing it back together like a puzzle. On one hand, I get it. It's a puzzle game, whatever. You know, it's kind of like the argument of if you... If you give a younger person a glass of wine at dinner, maybe they would be more inclined to be more responsible around liquor when they are older. However, you can't bitch and complain that... People are getting shot up all over the place if guns are this heavily ingrained into our fucking culture. Now, having said that, I don't have a problem with Nerf guns or video games because everything is fucking violent. I just think it's stupid that everybody's going to make such a big deal about guns. And I'm not saying they're not a big deal and you should... Handle them responsibly and be safe with them. But I think a gun assemble app is a little bit overboard, in my personal opinion. But late, maybe, just maybe, I'm a little bit loose in the wrist. It's possible. I don't know. But going back over to nerve guns, I mean, these motherfucking things are everywhere. Like I said, even when I was a kid, super soakers were fucking huge. I'm actually, I want to look. Uh, I probably have to close this and open it, don't I? No, there, okay. It's here. I understand I spelled that wrong. I just don't feel like going back and fixing it. Didn't know there was two words. 1989. Damn. See this shit? Super Soaker was invented in 1989 by engineer Lonnie Johnson. Prototype combined PCB. I always thought that was PCP, not PVC. Shows how much I know. Pipe, acrylic glass, and an empty soda bottle originally sold, now produced by Hasbro under the Nerf brand Super Soaker and has generated more than a billion dollars in sales. You're fucking right, dude. That was the shit. Used to wreck motherfuckers. Are you kidding me? 
And then summer sun just sh- give people face shots all over the neighborhood, bro. I didn't know what to do. So, got no problem with that. I didn't realize that shit was just getting big. It was born in 85. Say so we had like the first round. That's awesome. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. You know, it is what it is. I mean, it's cool. We'll give them darts, give them water, and shoot each other and shit. But when it comes to real guns, like we need to just be able, and this, a lot of this shit comes back to your responsibility as a parent. What you allow your kids to take in, some shit's going to be out of your control, obviously. But, you know. But this, this nerf thing is a problem. You shoot it, and the fucking darts go everywhere. And then... Yeah, but I'm not going to say what he wants to do, what his idea for it is. Oh, I don't know what he said. I know, I remember what it was. I just don't want to say it. Oh, oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Just in case. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, seeing the darts go everywhere, then you got to walk around and pick them up. That's pretty dumb. I mean, I get it, but those shits get lost. And then they just get replaced, which is smart on the the company's end. But so there was also something called laser tag. This will be interesting. Is that it? Get the fuck out of here, dude. I remembered, dude. You, oh my god! Laser tag debuts the controversy, bro. Look at this. Nineteen eighty six, the year laser tag made its debut. Dozens of Americans, top cartoonists, thought it was enough of an issue to protest against the war toys for Christmas. We're a war country. Let's just get that out of the way. This country, rather, its leaders love nothing more than finding somebody and spanking them. That's what they enjoy doing. So is it any fucking wonder that we get introduced, like we learn to crawl, walk, and then shoot guns. That's the system in America. If you're not from here, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Now, personally, growing up with all of these toys... I don't have, I don't know why, but I don't feel the need to want to shoot a gun. Guns are intimidating to me. Like, I'd be too afraid of the kickback. That And, you know, any number of accidents can happen, I'm sure. Now, I know there's protocols and all types of shit. But, you know, I just don't, personally, it's like I'm not a need for speed guy. I'm not a gun dude. I, like, I'm not opposed to other people having them if you're responsible. But these toys never made me want to go out and shoot a gun, and I'm retarded. So, I mean, I don't know what excuse you regular motherfuckers that don't have issues are what your excuse is. But this fucking thing... It was something like this. Oh my god, dude. That was the shit... There was a place, there was a fucking place, recreation station, that used to be over in Bayville. It's not there anymore. It's a toilet store now. But you'd be able to go into this place, and you could shoot motherfuckers, right? It's all fluorescent room. You got vests on, like this shit right there. This shit right here. And you can shoot each other. And the cool thing is, me and my brother were laughing about this earlier... The cool thing about laser tag is when you shot a motherfucker, somebody couldn't go, oh, you didn't hit me. Nah, bitch, your chest vibrated, motherfucker. I got you. Don't even play. Don't even play. Because you could easily go from... You could easily go from... uh, What the fuck? 
I don't even, I can't even imagine what this is going to be. What? It was the night before Christmas. Hell, it went fast. The whole damn family was showing off their ass. Well, Ma in the whorehouse, Pa in jail, sits on the corner yelling pussy for sale. Well. I just settled down to smoke me some grass when I heard a jingle jingle of brass. I ran over to the window to pick up my stash. I slipped on a beer can and busted my ass. Oh. It was a little fat fucker jerking his dick. I knew in a moment it was old Saint Nick. He come down the chimney screaming like hell because he just caught his balls on an old rusty nail. He spread out the presents under the tree. A vibrator for sis and some rubbers for me. I heard him yell as he blew out of sight. Fuck you all. It's been a hell of a night. Merry Christmas! <laughs> Hilarious, dude. It's like a jungle sometimes. Makes me wonder how I keep from going under. You know? But anyway, poor we are interrupted by that rude motherfucker. Your chest would vibrate, and you would know that you hit a motherfucker. And if they decided to play cute, oh no, you didn't, no, you didn't. Then it went to the hands, bro. Like, oh, you want to fuck around, son? Cause I'll fucking whip you. Fuck out of here. That shit is real. It has happened. I've seen it. I've been. I've partaken in the festivities. Sometimes you gotta beat a motherfucker's ass. Not saying we were right. Just saying that it happened. Anyway, this shit was cool, dude. And obviously, you know, I only went a couple of times. Because that shit wasn't cheap. But, you know, it was fucking awesome, dude. You didn't have to pick up any darts. You didn't have to do any of that shit. Worry about losing it. All you had to do was replace the batteries. You can just... You move it away from the thing. Like, you would literally put it to your chest. It would activate, and it would count down. And be like, all right, you got however many seconds to separate and hide from each other. And then you got to find one another, you know, shoot up shit. You got to reload, do all that. It's fucking awesome, dude. It's fucking awesome. But I mean, like, again, I'm not opposed to it. I just think the gun app thing is a little too far. But what the fuck do I know? I'm not a gun owner. I'm not. I don't have no desire to own a gun. So, but that's my stint into it. And I guess it just comes down to what the fuck. What, you, what you're what you going to teach your kids what they should do, what they shouldn't do, and all that shit. That's not for me to fucking judge. But if you want to weigh in and tell me to go fuck myself, feel free. I don't care. Because obviously, as you can see, this debate has been going on since 86. And it's not going anywhere. I'm not saying we should ban all the guns. I'm not saying we should ban Nerf guns or laser tags or video games. Like, GTA is extremely violent, but as long as you can understand that what that is is a video game, and Call of Duty is a video game, and those rules in that world does not translate over to the real world, fine, shoot up shit, have fun, enjoy it. But you gotta be able to know the difference. So let's just cross that off the list. I just wanted to get that out. So, moving on to our fucking next topic of discussion. Two things that I know fairly well. The sympathy invite and the Irish goodbye. Now, if you're unaware of what an Irish goodbye is, let me explain it to you. Because I happen to be the king of the Irish goodbye. 
It's what I do. I didn't invent it. I just carry on the tradition because it's easier. It's easier. An Irish goodbye is where you're at a party and people would be like, oh, you're a dick for this. But say you're at a party or some shit and it's time to go. It's time to go. We want to get the fuck out of here. Slip out the door. Nobody's paying attention. By the time everybody starts looking around and figured out what happened, you're already gone. Nobody knows nothing. You're already out the door. I like to do that. Because one thing that I don't like to do is stop people in the middle of a conversation and go, Hey, I'm leaving. You know, Mr. Important over here, I'm leaving your home now and I need you to say goodbye to me. So hold your conversation, please. You shut the fuck up. I'm leaving. That's more important. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like I'm doing. Now, I know we all have made up unwritten rules in society that says that these are the things that you're supposed to do. Like, I had the opportunity. I was right at the door, too. I even looked at Jen, and I was like, dude, it's it's right here. I could, we could just go. We could just go. Let's just go. They're not going to notice. They're not going to notice. Who cares? And she was like, you can't do that, man. It's going to take two seconds, right? So then, like, all right, well, everybody's over there having a conversation, so I guess we'll go over that way, and we'll wait until one of us, somebody looks over awkwardly, like, can I help you with something? Be like, yeah, we're leaving. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Went over to that side, everybody starts gathering around on that side. So, like, all right, fuck you, you know, I'm just going. As luck would have it, and this is the other move as well that you can do. As our luck would have it, right when we were about to make a break for the door... Another group of people decided to walk out the door. Just leave her up here. She's a fucking dog. Close the door and leave her up here. She's probably just excited to be here. Well, I guess it's because she knows that the neighbors are outside. Probably. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's, I think, why she wants to go down. Maybe. Will you want to leave me a Look out the door. Some more. Uh -huh. Come here. Come here. Well, that's fucked up. Then no wonder why she don't fucking. Daddy has a whole fucking thing in the tree for you. Right. Come on. Look, look, you blind dog. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. What is this? It smells terrible. Which means you're probably going to love it. Sit. Sit. No, no, no. Sit. Good girl. Chew it, you psycho. And to break it in half for you. Good girl. Good girl. She's been over at her mom's for a couple of days while we run around and do what we gotta do. And plus, her mom wanted her to be there, but the other dogs are cunts. So, a whole different story for another time. But anyway, another group of people go to slip out the door. Now, in my expert opinion, this, if you can find a way to plan your exit 
if you don't want an Irish goodbye and you're having a difficult time getting to the host to be able to say your goodbye, you can always wait if time will allow you to for somebody else to slip out the door and then as soon as they walk out, like a fucking like cue of the fucking ghetto boys, dude, because as soon as they went to walk out, they went out the door, I gave it two seconds and walked right up behind where they were at and was like, alright, we're leaving, alright, bye, see you later, peace out, everybody! You know, that's how that's how we did it. And then we roll on. Now, that's going to bring me opposite to where we were, which is the, the sympathy invite, which I'm pretty sure, I mean, I don't know for 100% that I got one. It just it felt like it was a sympathy invite. One of my aunts hit me up, and she said, "We're doing a deal at my house. If you and Jen can make it, you know we would love to have you. Whatever." Paraphrasing something along those lines, right? It's a bring Christmas Eve. Let us know if you can make it. She didn't give me the address. So, maybe, maybe that's why. Maybe I wasn't supposed to figure it out. Maybe I wasn't supposed to show up. I don't know. Because I did, I did try to message her back and be like, hey, what's the address? And I got nothing. Right? Fairness to her, she is hosting a party with a house full of fucking people. So, it's not like she's hitting her phone every two seconds to see what the fuck I'm saying. So we go there, I walk in, and everybody is kind of surprised that I'm there. Already I feel uncomfortable because of the group of people that I'm around. I don't see people that often. What do you want? Lay down. I know you understand me. Lay down. I don't have nothing else for you. Stop. Lay down. You're a mess. You got crumbs all over the bottom of your face. There is no more. Look, you ate it all. You ate it all. I know you're pumped to be here, but I live here, dude. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. I live here, believe it or not. I know I'm stoked about it too, dude. I can't believe it. <laughs> But, you know, I don't know, man. Everybody's like, oh, he's here. Cool. No, I don't have any evidence that this is what they thought. But in my fucking whacked out brain, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking that everybody is thinking. So, you know, whatever. I And I always, also, if you want to leave, my rule of thumb is I usually pick Whoever the first person is to leave, that's who I'm going immediately after. Once the first person rolls out the door, if it's been a decent amount of time, then I'm, we're rolling next. Like, let's go. Because I don't want to be that guy where they're like, all right, we're trying to wrap this thing up. Don't want to be that guy. Don't want to have that speech. It's only happened once before, and that was because I was too uncomfortable to be able to say that I wanted to leave, and then I overstayed my welcome, and that shit's never going to happen again. So now, as soon as the first person goes, gone, out the door. So, is it a sympathy invite? I don't know. Honestly, I can't wait until weed gets legalized, and then this shit is going to be a fucking... Breeze, dude. I mean, sure, it's gonna be weird, but it's gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Go outside, get fucked up. You know, what, man? What do you want? Come on. You happy now? Because I know you're just trying to con me into something. I don't know what you want, but... It's either that or she's trying to get me to take her now. Yeah, see the head? She knows. Yeah, hey, don't eat my nose, please. I kind of need that. 
I'm as fat as your breast stinks. I know you may be trying to do me a favor, but come on now. So, I don't know. I don't have any evidence to support it. We went over to another house today. My father's house today. That's always weird. It's like I've said before. The guy is not a social dude. He's not a social dude. And then I don't know what to fucking say. So I just don't talk. I don't talk. I don't want to say anything. I try not to talk to anybody. I'll stop by. You know I mean? Brief conversations. Extremely brief. I mean, like, to the point where I don't even, I don't even really crack jokes, dude. Just uncomfortable. It's not my, it, it's not my favorite position to be in. Honestly, it really isn't. It's very uncomfortable just because I don't know what to do. If I knew where everybody was at, realistically, then it would make it a little bit easier. But I don't, so I don't know if they do this because they feel that they have to. Or because they genuinely want to. Because I know they could easily just not say anything. But then, you know, people get to talking. Are they afraid that word might get back to me through somebody? I don't, I have no idea. I don't know. But I do know that there's an air. There's an air in the air. There's a, there's a feeling in the fucking air, dude. When I walk into any of these rooms. You can, it's, to me... It's obvious. Like, you, if, if if I wasn't used to it, it could choke me out. The uncomfort in the fucking air, dude. But because I've been around it for so long and in so many awkward social situations, it's like second nature to me to be able to operate within that confined space. I just, I hate that it's like that. I really wish that it wasn't. Sucks. But, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, the other thing is that since we're on the subject of family, there's something I want to bring up. It's going to be a little touchy, but I, I, I want to talk about it, so I'm going to talk about it. I don't mean any disrespect. I don't mean any disrespect. However, anybody that knows me, you know that I tell you the way that it is. Always. There's no sense in lying and making up stories and sparing feelings and all that nonsense. So let's just get into it. My cousin passed away a few years ago. 2017. 2020 will be three fucking years already. Jesus. You know, good dude going into the Navy, petty officer, the whole deal. You know, his mom, heartbroken, like that's her child. The kid was fucking, I don't know, I think 18, 19. Let me see if I can do the math. Because I'm not good at this kind of thing. Nineteen. Because 98, 1998 minus 2017 is 19. So he was 19 years old. It's heartbreaking. Horrifying. Nobody... No parent should ever have to go through the trauma of burying a child. It should just never happen. You know, if you've seen, if you've been around the channel long enough, or you even listened to the podcast, you probably heard me talk about this, which is the bracelet that I got. It says YOLO on one side, and then it's got his name on the other Anchor, heart, you know, AWO3. I don't know if that was like numbers or something to the thing that he was in. I'm not sure. But she's been doing a thing where, you know, she gave everybody bracelets. She gave everybody a necklace with his face on it. 
you know, last, not last Christmas, the Christmas before that, she gave us all, for Christmas, she gave us these, which is a, a picture of them in a, in a case thing, you know, with a little note on the back of it. December 24, 2017. Which, don't get me wrong, is well done. My, my thing is, like, she, and she did it again this year, where she gave us, they, they do a thing where they go, they do, I believe it's called Run for the Forgotten. Right? And everybody's a team. Team, whoever the person was that you lost, that's the team name. I think, I don't know, I tried looking this up. In a separate deal. Could not find anything. Had to scrap the video. So we're doing it over. But you know it's his last name. Right. So she got a bunch of gifts all wrapped up. And they're all relatively the same shape. All of that. So I kind of figure it's all going to be the same thing. Roughly about. So she has everybody gather around each other. And she says, I want you all to open everything at the same time. And she gets the camera out and she's recording it in his pajama pants. Two sets for everybody. I mean, they gave Jenna set, which is nice of her to do. But it's got, you know, the team and then his last name on it. My only thing is... It seems like an odd thing. I don't have an issue with the item itself. It's the the presentation of the item makes me feel weird. Because I'm not sure if, like, she's expecting, like, some kind of... Re I don't know how I'm supposed to react to that. Like some, I get something like this, and like you know, like when it when she gave everybody that, of course, it's fresh. I mean, people still talk about them all the time. I'm not saying that it isn't still fresh. You know what the fuck I'm saying? You know, everybody's tears, crying, the whole deal, and I'm standing like a jerk off, no emotion because hold it down, gotta hold it down all the time. Can't show any emotion ever if you can help it. So, you know, I just don't, I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. Like, thank you, I appreciate it, I just, I would rather, I would rather not open it in a circle with other people so we can all look at each other and go, huh? That's uncomfortable to me. Now, I don't know if, I don't know. I, I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't even mention this, but I'm only bringing it up because I'm not sure if anybody else has had this experience. Like, what is it, because I feel like I'm an asshole if I don't, because I don't give, I don't give, I don't know if I'm supposed to, am I supposed to, is the proper emotion to cry, to smile, to be happy, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know how to deal with it. I'm, I'm nobody trains you for this. You know, so I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I wear the, I wear the, sh I got the kids sitting in my fucking deal here. So, you know, it's not like I don't, it's not like I don't care. I'm not saying that I don't care. I just, you know, I don't, and I understand everybody grieves differently. You know, I'm just not, just not sure. I don't know, honestly, I'm gonna have to get in touch with her and be like, dude, you gotta give me one of the, you gotta, let me know how I can buy one of them hoodies, because they were selling hoodies for a while, but I think they were something crazy, like $40, which is a fucking disgusting amount of money, but I'm pretty sure it all goes to charity and all that, and I know that merch in general is not a cheap thing to make. So I can understand by you charging forty dollars, that's probably just the amount of money that it costs you to make the fucking thing. I hundred percent I get it. It may have even been fifty, but I've looked through Facebook and I can't find where it was, what it was. I don't know if they took it down, if it doesn't exist anymore. 
and I've been reluctant to contact her because, you know, I don't want to don't want to seem douchey. But like, hey, you know, you still selling hoodies? Like, how come you didn't get one when we had them? Well, I didn't have the money. Just relocating and trying to figure out my fucking life. And when I have this spare money, I will fucking buy one so that I can wear it. And I'm gonna wear the pajama pants too. It's just, you know, a hoodie would serve me better because, you know, then I, I can wear it around, you know, and it's an extra hoodie for me to have, which is always a good thing. So there's that. You know, I guess... This is all over the fucking place. So, I mean, I guess that brings me to the last thing for now, which is carrying on tradition. I realized, because I'm a fucking idiot, when we were at Jen's mom's house, that, I mean, maybe her sister might do it, I don't know, but, you know, the kids are only, I think, 14 now, I think they both are going to be 14 after January, because that's when one of their birthdays is, oh, and they got phones now, by the way, they got numbers, their contacts were sent via text message by her mom, and I was like, oh. Jesus, cell phones already? Fuck. I get it. It's the world we live in, I guess. They're like, here they come on red tube, dude. You better fucking, you better put some backup systems on that shit, dude, because it's going to get crazy. Anyway. So I'm not sure if this is going to fall on us, but I feel like it should be an option for us to also hold a holiday here. I'm not opposed to that. So that they can they can stop here on the holiday. Who knows? Maybe they won't want to. I'm doing a lot of assuming right now. I don't know where they're going in their life, what their personalities are going to be like. They might not want to be bothered. They might be atheists or super Christian. Who the fuck knows? They might be Scientologists in eight years. And not talk to any of us anymore. I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. I'm just assuming that we would then take that responsibility of hosting the holidays over here. Right? So they could have a place to go and sit and bullshit and catch up on their life. Except I'm not going to make it uncomfortable. I'm not going to make it uncomfortable. And it's not a shot at my fucking... And, dude, because I really like her. She's a cool lady. And I'm not saying that because she's my aunt. I'm saying that because she's fucking cool. And my cousins are cool. You know, like, they've never been... They've never been dicks to me. Which, family or no family, that shit means something to me. Like, they've always treated me like I'm family. A lot of people don't do that. Looking at you. (laughs) You don't watch this. And, ugh, please. They, now everybody's like, oh, who's he talking about? Don't fucking worry about it. And it's, if you know, you know, you should know exactly who the fuck I'm talking about, dude. It's not that hard to figure it out. Just look around at the one person who always looks like they're in a bad fucking mood. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Ugh, ridiculous. I don't know what fucking crawled up your ass, dude, but smile once in a while, will you? Please. Jesus Christ. So, I mean, I don't know. I thought these are tra- topics were going to translate into bigger shit. And I'm not opposed to holding shit here. I know I said that already. If it comes down to that, I would do that. Make it comfortable for them. Like, I've already told the both of them. Like, if there's some shit that you need to talk about, dude. You know, Jen's told you, I'll tell you. You can talk to us. You know, we're not going to judge you. Best that we can, we're not going to judge you the best we can, because I'm not going to say I'm not going to judge you, but I'm definitely going to judge you. You can talk to me about anything, but if I find out you're doing heroin, I'm going to fuck you up. That's a, I, dude, think what you want. I don't care. Think what you want. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. 
I don't fuck around. That shit is very fucking serious, dude. You don't pop pills. You don't do dope. I mean, coke. All that shit. Don't do all that shit. And don't fucking... Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't be a fucking idiot like me. You know, don't try to be cool. So, I don't... We'll see... We'll see how that shit goes. I don't know. Are we gonna carry on the tradition? I'm not sure. You know, it's just... It's a real creepy place... In life right now, dude. Because everybody's getting older. I can see it. You know, most people... Who already have kids have had kids, are going to have kids, have had children, or are married, you know, I'm like the one straggler left, not married, no children, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but, I mean, I'm the odd one out, and maybe that's the reason why people don't really conversate with me, because they're like, oh, you know, what are you, what are you doing, you don't have a kid for us to play with or spoil we don't care you know but I mean it's whatever it is what it is you know I I like my life the way it is I don't want to have kids not fair to them I already had the whole conversation not gonna do it again not gonna do it again I'm being responsible As much as you might want to argue with my decision, I'm being responsible. Because it's not fair to anybody else for it to be any other fucking way. Honestly. It's bad enough that probably in 20 years, there's a good chance that I may not walk anymore. So what the fuck business do I have? I mean, even if I had a kid right this second. If they're lucky in 20 years, I'm rolling myself around in a fucking wheelchair. What kind of fucking life is that? Who the fuck wants to see their parents slowly deteriorate? And like, not in a normal way, either. Fuck that. No way. I'm not doing that. I witnessed enough people go down to sicknesses and all kinds of shit. No fucking way. I'm not gonna be that selfish. But you know, it's getting creepy. Everybody's getting older. You know, I'm not rooting for a funeral in any sense. But, I mean, it. I think it's around that time where, you know, it is more common for people to pass away from a variety of reasons. So you always got to be ready. I mean, it could be me. Who the fuck knows? So I really should be more careful about what I say on here and how I deliver it because if I die tomorrow whatever the last thing I did is if I uploaded it is all that you're going to have which by the way is is part of the reason for the uptick in activity because I just don't I want to just have as much shit up as possible now I'm not saying it's always going to be like that but and I'm sure if I died nobody's going to be like Oh, you know, I'm sad. Let me go listen to some dumb shit that he used to talk about. But you never know. I know it's dark. But it's, it's, this is it, dude. You know? Everybody's did their deal. And now they all go back to their normal lives. And I go back to my life. And now, this is it. It's readjusting back into regular life quote unquote and the day to day struggle that is life so you know I mean we got a variety of topics coming up in the future this as a matter of fact is going to be in the future because I know it's Christmas day right now but I'm not editing this for a while I did some other shit earlier today and I'm not editing that for a while either and I know I shouldn't even be recording this but I thought while this shit is still fresh in my head let me fucking talk about some of this shit which turns out wasn't really that important to talk about I guess but I did keep thinking about it and now that hopefully I brought it up here it will stop rattling around in my head maybe you feel this way in your circle 
around your family, possibly your friends. Which, by the way, I don't know how many people have... It's around, I think, this time is where you really figure out how many friends you have. And my estimated count is zero. Not a phone call, not an email, not a message, nothing from anybody. So, who the fuck are you? As I say that, creeper. I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't recognize you. And I definitely don't know your name. Ah, brutal. That sucks, man. Well, Daniel, I mean, you got my fucking podcast. Not that that will fucking help you. I uh, should have known. Fucking robot. Because you got one fucking picture. Absolutely no friends. And you're single. <clears throat> Fuck out of here, dude. Fish in somebody else's pond, dickhead. You're not catching me. You know, how are you talking shit? is not going to help somebody get through the fact that they don't really have anybody. But this is why I'm doing this. This is why I put out, you know, podcast highlights on fucking Instagram. Was asking if there was any podcasts that were Christmas related. And I said, yeah, dude, I did a fucking Christmas Eve episode and a Christmas Day episode. He was like, well, man, it's a lot of content. You know, pound it. And like, yeah, but somebody needs that somewhere, dude. I would have. Do you know what I did last Christmas? I went down to her aunt's basement, and I sat down there and I listened to Joe Rogan and Joey Diaz talk for three hours. That was more comfortable for me to sit in a basement. By myself while there's a whole entire house full of people upstairs watching fucking King of Queens Kevin James comedy special. And we already know where I land on certain issues and there's no need to have a fucking like six minute gag bit. No need for it at all. You're funnier than that, dude. In my personal opinion... I think you're better than that, but whatever. Get in where you fit in, I guess. So I went down to the basement, had a pair of headphones, and I listened to Joey Diaz and Joe Rogan talk, which is one of my all-time top favorite podcast episodes of the Joe Rogan experience ever. Just because it came through perfect for me, dude. Like, I'm down sitting. I went, I was in the basement before I knew this episode was coming out. And then when it popped up on YouTube, I was like, fuck, yeah, I find, thank Christ, somebody out there got me. Because when the holidays come around, dude, everybody slows down. Everybody takes the fucking day off or the week off and there's no content. None. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's jerked off videos here and there, like mine, for example. But... You know, for somebody like me, I have regular places that I go to for content. And it just so happens that every motherfucker takes off around this time for the entire week in most cases. So there's really not a whole lot for me to get through my fucking day. Which is one big part of the reason why a lot of the time I'm in here doing shit of my own. And two... I'm putting shit up now so that hopefully I can help get you through that fucking section, whatever that might be, in your life. Be it the holiday, a work shift, a shit. We've already talked about this. A train ride, a bus trip, whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. Whatever it is that you're doing, I'm trying to have your back, dude. You just give me the chance. Maybe you don't like what I got to say. Don't stick around. 
You don't have to follow the Twitter at Laughing Birds or the Instagram at Laughing Birds Pod. You don't have to subscribe to the YouTube page at Jack of One Trade. You know, you don't have to do none of that shit. You don't have to find the podcast on Anchor.fm, iTunes, Castbox, Spotify, or like the eight other platforms that it's on, including TuneIn, Breaker, and Stitcher. You don't have to do any of that shit. I'm just saying, you know, if you wanted to, the option is there, you know? What do I know? Look, I'm just a guy. I'm just a girl in the world, dude. Okay? I'm just a girl in the world. And I'm trying to fucking remember the rest of the lyrics from... I believe that was Spiderwebs by No Doubt for some reason. Creeping up in my head. And I don't know the rest of the words. Is it? Yes, it is. I think it is. I think it is. I know the hook is so... I have no idea why I know this. I think she says... Sorry I'm not home right now. I'm surfing through the spider webs. Leave a message and I'll call you back. Right? That's what she says? Am I really about to listen to this right now? Christ. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do this. I did not want to do this. Wait, is that a different song? Okay, I put this on mute because I don't know what's going to get copy blocked and what's not. Holy shit. And we're not we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Two different songs. Who knew? What is with this fucking trash? <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different song, dude. Who knew? Who knew it was two different songs? I didn't know until right now. I did not know. Come on, bro. Stop fucking playing with me right now. Give me the deal. You already know what it is. Come on. That fucking ska reggae era, I think. I just want to get to the hook so I can know what she says. The web you're spinning. I had no idea that's what she even said. Right? I was close. How do you like that, dude? Two different songs. No idea this whole time I thought it was one song. But I don't listen to No Doubt on a regular fucking basis. Even though Gwen Stefani is a bad motherfucker. She is a bad motherfucker, dude. And that song with Eve is the shit. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you think. Let me blow your mind, dude. Come on, you better shut the fuck up. Eve is... Stop it. She's the new generation little Kim, dude. Fucking sexy. Her rap her ass off. Shut the fuck up. That's a bad motherfucker too, dude. You don't know? <laughs> you don't know, dude. Stop it. Fuck out of here. So, I don't know, man. I'll just... I'll, I don't know when I'm going to edit this or the other one. And we got to get back to the Twitter controversy. Which is their terms and conditions. Right? Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, the screaming one I got Christmas Eve is taken care of. That hasn't come out yet, but it's going to. And then one of my favorite things ever. If it will fucking play. 
Ah, take your time. Oh, shit, this bitch got a dick. <laughs> the shit right there i love that god damn it if you know where that's from let me know please because i could just imagine a look on that dude's face when he says that and it must be goddamn priceless which by the oh yeah i said that i already recorded shit earlier today i'm not editing any of it yet the video portion of that is already done you know so i don't know when this is coming out we are taking care of all the way up to February 1st from here on, this is where I take my vacation and take some time off the only difference is content is taken care of until February so even if I didn't make shit from the time that I press this stop button until February 1st you're taken care of you don't have nothing to worry about all January is done first week of February, the first Saturday of February is fucking damn, solid I make sure to take care of my people, dude you know, I don't I don't like to fuck around so, look, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, I've been rambling on for an hour and five minutes see, now I'm already starting to feel bad, like I shouldn't have said that shit but it's a legit question, dude. I don't know what to what to do with that. I'm not even trying to say nothing bad about the lady. You know, everybody grieves differently. I'm not saying anything wrong. I just don't understand. Is there a certain reaction like I'm supposed to have? Does she care? You know, is that her way of making him part of the holiday maybe? And that's why she's doing it? I understand that. It makes sense. I didn't honestly never thought about that until just now when I just said it now it makes more sense but is that the case I don't know I'd like to say that I know but I don't but you know what I'm I'll figure it out I'll figure it out dude uh, so I don't know when I'm coming back I don't know when I'm gonna edit this but whenever I do you will know so don't be surprised if you wind up getting this Sometime in February, March, who the fuck knows when. But just know right now, Terminator Timeline, December 25th, 2019. So for all we know, this could come out next year. Who the fuck knows? 2020, bitch. Make sure you just, I don't know, just try to have a fucking decent life and try not to kill yourself. That's the only advice I can give you. You know, just try. I know it's going to be hard. There's going to be some days where you just feel like tapping out and you can't do it anymore. But it's eventually, it's got to get better. It's got to get better. You know? And if I, this can somehow help to get you through that, I hope it does. Sincerely, I do. I know it's not going to fix your problems, but maybe it'll just stop your brain from overthinking for an hour or however long it is so look man it's it is what it is I want all of you to do well in this upcoming year even the motherfuckers that I don't like that I have problems with people that can't stand me I want all you fucks to do well just cause I don't like you doesn't mean that I'm rooting against you I want you to have your shit together I'm just not going to be cheerleading for you when you do. But just, no, I don't want anything bad to happen to you just because I don't like you. Because unlike some people, you know, I'm not a complete fucking hater to my goddamn core, dude. I want other people to succeed. Even if I'm not succeeding. Which, by the way, I am succeeding. I'm doing what I love to do. And it doesn't matter how many fucking people are here to witness it happen. The point is... That there's something I wanted, I went fucking after it, and we are building a goddamn empire, motherfucker. So that's what's important. Don't fucking forget it. Don't let these motherfuckers try to trick you into thinking that it's all about numbers, and because you don't got a million fucking people sucking your dick all at once out of fucking nowhere, like who the fuck you are or who the fuck I am, that that's what you're supposed to have. Don't let these motherfuckers fool you, dude. This shit comes from hard work. 
And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you'll catch a fucking following, dude. If not, fuck them all. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? There's people that I think are fucking amazing. 90% of people have never heard of in their fucking life, and it doesn't matter. Because I support what the fuck they do. That's what's important. So, do what you want to do, seriously. Do what you want to do. Support this shit. Don't support it. Hate it. Love it. Just try to get through this fucked up life the best way that you can. Because I know we're all not getting out alive. But I didn't care. They weren't teaching what I want. I didn't give a shit. It's important in life that you don't give a shit. It can help you a lot. So I didn't give a shit. And I was this kind of, I was a pot smoker when I was 13. We did all sorts of unlawful things. And I was that kind of person. I was one who swam against the tide of what is expected and what is uh, what the establishment wants from us. But I didn't know that about myself because this dream blinded me. This dream was about America, about the path that we all follow, the middle of the road, middle class, America, mainstream will dream. And, and being, meanwhile, I'm sitting there like this, you know, fuck those people, fuck that shit. Look at this stupid shit, pot smoking, anti-authority. See, bing, 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 anti-authority. Pro of the establishment. These artists are using their talent to project their feelings and ideas, not just please people. And I suddenly was able to see my place and to realize I was in the wrong place.